we're hoping to um, have the majority of our areas, and especially the areas that have been hardest hit, seed themselves out, and then we're coming through. We're not just leaving that seed standing because the seed has to reach the soil and it has to be kind of tilled into the soil a little bit or contact with the soil in order to germinate because it needs the moisture and the darkness and everything. And if it just falls on top of a lot of grass residue, it will be digested or rot or mold and it won't actually germinate. So we're using the animals to reseed instead of tractors and we will use the animals hooves and feet to stomp in the seed and their manure to fertilize the seed and they're also going to be stomping in with that a lot of different types of plant vegetative matter in different stages of growth. Some it's still not where we need this grass to be because the, the, the blades of a grass plant change in their shape based on how stressed it is. So this spikier leaf, these thinner leaves are the same, they're the same plant, they're fescue plants, but in different areas of the pasture or in different, different settings, you'll notice when a grass is not stressed, it will A, stay in a vegetative state longer, so it will have more leaves, wider leaves, they won't go set its seed as quickly. Um, but when the plant senses around it that it's not a great, it's not living in great conditions, meaning it doesn't have enough soluble nutrient, enough fertilizer, it doesn't have, it's compacted, it will go ahead and set its yield and set itself to only produce enough plant material to be able to set seed. And it's basically trying to reproduce in hopes of that seed traveling to a better place that has better nutrient. And so any plant when it's stressed will produce seed faster and will have sometimes even more seed than when it was relaxed because it's basically putting all of its energy into the next generation rather than trying to make itself healthy in this generation. I'm gonna pick a couple flowers and try to show you if the clover seed is viable or not. And when it's in the flower stage, like the one that's white, it's not viable. But you can see the one in my right hand is brown and it has turned over and flipped down to the earth. And these there's every little flower petal is now turning into a seed. But if I squeeze it, I don't, there's no seed I can pop out of the bottom. It's all just soft right now. So this is gonna need, um, and I've picked this one so it will never make a seed, a viable seed. But there's other brown ones that are starting to turn over, like over here. And eventually all these white flowers will turn brown and they'll disappear and you think, well that didn't last. that was a waste. I didn't graze that clover with my horses. Why not? Well, it's not a waste because the clover, the leaves might not come back till fall or next spring. But if I take the patience and allow my farm to rest a little bit or a part of my pasture to rest, um, pretty soon I'm going to be increasing my clover seed. And I know that that clover seed will last for 60 years or so at least. 10 or 20 in my soils if they don't run off with water down the hill too far. And so just one season of producing seed with clover can produce a lot of seed. But the grasses are soft seeded, they're not hard seeded. So those grass seed, you have to continually, every year, two or three years, you need to let the pasture seed out, you need to let the seed dry out, and you need to replenish your seed bank. And I'm going to open this little pod. See that? So the seeds are viable. They're hard as a rock. When I squeeze them with my fingernail, there's nothing, nothing doughy about them. And most of the, that was the only, let's see, on this entire plant I picked, that was the, there's only three more pods at the top. So the top ones are coming to maturity last because they grew last. The plant grew from the bottom up. So the seed heads at the bottom are the oldest and the youngest at the top. So most of these seeds along the way up have already opened. Nature usually provides, it always provides for seed that is ready to open and release to the ground the bounty that's been accumulated. So um, it's kind of like the fruits of our labors. We're meant to give them back to the earth. And this plant, if you can see these twisted up seed pods, they actually dry and twist and it, the twisting process forces the seed out. So a lot of these seed pods are empty, so that means all that seed is here, but a lot of it with such dense grass might not reach the soil if it weren't for these um, beautiful replacements for tractors that I have here called horses. I wanted to 
show you how to look for seed germination. And this will happen, seeds will germinate sometimes within a week or even two, three days in the right conditions after the hay is stomped. So if you look under the areas where you're stomping or you spread a little hay and you want to know what seed is going to come up, spread a little hay, water it down or wait for the rain, and then once it's all wet and mashed down in there, go and look underneath. So we dig this up and you see there's little clover plants germinating, these little broadleaf plants. And, but they're very spindly and you notice the color isn't very healthy and they're struggling and they're, they're struggling because that hay layer was just too thick for those plants. Whereas where the hay, it was a little bit on the edge of the hay, these are some older plants. There are some young grass plants in here. So look for grasses, look for clovers. Oftentimes the clover will come back in the compacted areas, white clover will come back first. 